Hello friends, uh, very often it happens that uh, a clinician tends to think that he has acquired enough skill and therefore he tends to omit certain steps during the clinical examination. Uh, well, it can land up in some kind of errors during the uh, during that clinical examination. So, based on such likely error is today's MCQ. So, let's see the MCQ, let's see its answer and discuss in detail what are the possible errors. A known case of hypertension has approached the OPD for routine evaluation. So, it's a case of hypertension and the physician is unaware of his atherosclerotic vessels and the possible existence of a silent gap. So, this MCQ is related to the silent gap also called as auscultatory gap. Now, the question is what could be the most likely error in the measurement of blood pressure if there is a silent gap in a particular patient and the clinician is not aware of that silent gap. What are the possible errors or what, what is the most likely error while the measuring uh, measurement of the blood pressure and the options are high systolic but low diastolic blood pressure will get measured erroneously or erroneously low systolic and high diastolic blood pressure will get measured or normal systolic but high diastolic or low systolic and normal diastolic you want to answer that think about it anyways the answer is the most likely error is going to be uh, low systolic but normal diastolic. It's low systolic but normal diastolic blood pressure uh, is the most likely error that is like uh, that is going to happen. Let's understand why this is the most likely error. Uh, let's assume the blood pressure in this individual to be uh, 200 by 96. So, when you go on to measure the blood pressure by auscultatory method, what should happen? You raise the pressure in the BP cuff. Let's say you raise it up to 230 mm of Hg and then start lowering it. What should happen is that you get the first sound at 200 mm of Hg. So, you note it as a systolic blood pressure. Then the sounds continue to appear. And finally, the sounds should disappear at 96. That is when you note it as uh, 96 as diastolic. So, you note it as 200 by 96 mm of Hg. This is what uh, should happen in a normal case. Now, assume that this patient has a silent gap or auscultatory gap. You know what is a silent gap or auscultatory gap. Uh, during the measurement of the blood pressure, the sounds disappear then again reappear and finally disappear. So, let's see what happens here. These are, this is just a hypothetical figure that we have taken. The BP uh, cuff was applied and the pressure was raised. Let's say pressure was lowered. First sound appears at 200. Then suddenly the sounds disappear at 170. Sounds again reappear at 140 and finally disappear at 96. Alright, so because of the silent gap, uh, there were no sounds between 170 and 140. And this gap in the Korotkov sounds is called as the silent gap or auscultatory gap. Let's assume that this patient has the gap between 170 and 140 and clinician was not aware of this. And clinician is recording the blood pressure for the first time. Now. Uh, he has not taken the uh, BP by palpatory method. Straight away, the clinician goes for auscultatory method and uh, doesn't know up to what level the uh, BP cuff should be or the uh, pressure should be raised in the BP cuff. So, he raises the pressure up to, let's say, 160 mm of Hg and starts lowering the pressure from 160. He starts lowering the pressure. The, uh, there is silent gap you are 160 in that range of the silent gap. So, you are in the silent gap and you start lowering the pressure. That means in this patient, the first sound will appear at 140 and then the sounds will disappear at 96. So, what will you note as the patient's blood pressure? 140 by 96 and what is the actual pressure? 200 by 96. 
So this is the most likely error in the measurement of blood pressure in the case of a silent gap, uh, low systolic and normal diastolic. That's the point number one and that's the answer to the MCQ. Now the question is, why couldn't it be the other error like uh, normal systolic but very high diastolic like 200 systolic and 170 diastolic. Why is that error less likely to happen? Uh, because at 170 the sounds are disappearing. So you might take systolic as 200 and 170 as the diastolic. No, this is less likely to occur because uh, let's assume that you have increased the pressure in the BP cuff up to 220, 230 and you start lowering it and you get the first sound at 200 and then the sounds keep coming and at 170 the sounds disappear. See, uh, when you are measuring the blood pressure and the sounds disappear, you don't immediately remove the BP cuff. You keep on lowering the pressure in the cuff to certain extent for some time even if the sound has disappeared. So it is very likely to happen that even if the sounds disappeared at 170 and you are still lowering the pressure for some time, again at 140 the sounds will uh, reappear and then uh, you will come to know that oh it was a silent gap. So this error is less likely to happen that you get normal systolic but high diastolic blood pressure. All right. Uh, well, so that was the answer to the MCQ. What was the possible error? Uh, we talked about it. Low systolic but normal diastolic. And why can't it be the other error? Normal systolic and high diastolic. We uh, have discussed that just now. We don't immediately remove the cuff when the sounds have disappeared. We uh, still lower the pressure and then the sound, if, if it was a silent gap, the sounds are likely to reappear. Uh, now coming to the importance of the palpatory method in all of this. Very often this question is also asked in the university exams. What is the importance of palpatory method? Because after all, it gives us only the systolic blood pressure. Whereas auscultatory method gives us both pressure, systolic and diastolic. So why should we go for palpatory method first? It is because palpatory method gives us a rough estimate of the systolic blood pressure. Let me explain why is that. Look, palpation is that of the pulse. We palpate the pulse. And every time the pulse appears, there was systolic pressure in the artery. I mean, heart goes in systole and the pulse appears. So that means every time the pulse appears, it is a systolic pressure in the artery. Now, uh, for the first time you are measuring the pressure and it is a palpatory method, you will raise the uh, the column of mercury and start lowering it. Suppose you took it up to 130 in this patient by palpatory method and start lowering it. Uh, the pulse was not there and suddenly at 200 the pulse will appear for the first time. You note that point and you say that's the systolic blood pressure. After that the pulse will continue to appear because your cuff pressure is going down. Uh, 190, 180, 170, but with each systole, the pulse is coming and the pressure is uh, 200. So, uh, pulse will not get obliterated after that, it will continue to come. So, by palpatory method, the point is that you get a rough idea about the systolic blood pressure. Then, when you go for the auscultatory method, now this is the important part. When you go for the auscultatory method, how much should be the pressure raised in the BP cuff? 30 millimeters over and above the systolic BP that you got by palpatory method. Got it? If by palpatory method you are getting X systolic blood pressure, then when you go for auscultatory method, raise the pressure in the cuff X plus 30. And then uh, you get the systolic and diastolic pressures. Uh, so that's the importance of palpatory method. Your answer, if they ask you in the viva, should be to avoid the possible silent gap error. Because if you are not aware of the silent gap and you raise the, uh, then you have no idea what is the patient's blood pressure, systolic and diastolic. And you raise uh, the pressure in the BP cuff randomly. So you might raise it up to 160 uh, without knowing the fact that this pressure, systolic blood pressure is actually 200. 
and then you start lowering it and uh, the error will happen so again to avoid the possible error in the silent gap or possible error in the blood pressure measurement when there is a silent gap to avoid that error you first check the pressure by palpatory method that should be your answer in the viva all right now coming to the theory part of it what is the possible reason for a silent gap silent gap also called as auscultatory gap what could be the possible reason uh, exact possible reason or mechanism has not been established but there are some possible errors that we can discuss uh, first of all we are talking about korotkov sounds and the, uh, and the possible gap in the korotkov sounds now why the sounds are produced in the first place why can why are the sounds are produced that can be heard with stethoscope it's because the blood flow is of two types the uh, turbulent blood flow and laminar blood flow so remember as long as the blood flow is turbulent you hear the sounds turbulent blood flow produces sounds which can be heard by stethoscope in this case the korotkov sounds and laminar blood flow does not produce any sounds so it's very highly likely that uh, when you when you are getting the sound the blood flow was turbulent then there was a gap silent gap means no sound was produced no sound was heard in that gap because the reynolds because the blood flow might have been laminar and then again it became turbulent so again the sounds appeared and finally they disappeared so possibility is that the blood flow turbulent uh, so uh, sounds were produced then suddenly it became laminar and then again became turbulent is that possible yes it is possible uh, because turbulence or laminar blood flow depends on the reynolds number reynolds number indicates whether the blood flow is turbulent or non turbulent and reynolds number is proportional to four factors vdp upon eta or viscosity velocity of the blood flow diameter of the blood vessel and density of the blood that is p divided by viscosity uh, so these four factors determine reynolds number out of these four we are interested in two factors velocity and diameter look uh, here we have we are looking at a possible atherosclerotic vessel so what is likely to happen is because of the irregularity of the vessel the velocity of the blood flow and the diameter of the vessel is changing during your uh, examination during your bp measurement and it is changing in such a way that the turbulent blood, blood flow suddenly became laminar and again became turbulent because of the irregular irregular diameter and therefore changes in also the velocity of the blood flow so finally to summarize this silent gap or auscultatory gap is likely to occur in the atherosclerotic individuals with hypertension point number 1 why it is likely to happen is because the blood flow is briefly changing from turbulent to laminar when it becomes laminar no sound will be heard so that will be silent gap and it may again become turbulent so velocity may rise again little bit or diameter again little bit changes that's possible because of the irregularity of the vessel wall so that's a possible reason or mechanism of uh, silent gap or auscultatory gap being present in certain hypertensive individuals and that was the concept behind uh, this particular mcq many more such uh, conceptual mcqs and graphs and other things are coming up in the uh, in the routine days uploads so why not subscribe to the channel